Well, welcome back. In this session, I'm going to teach you about some geoprocessing tools that are useful for working with elevation rasters. And the first thing we'll do is we'll use the clip tool to cut out the elevation raster that's inside the state of Alaska's polygon. And there's actually two clip tools. So if you do a search for clip, there's clip analysis with point line and polygon and clip data management for rasters. So we'll use that clip tool in the data management toolbox to cut out a raster. Okay, and there's two common errors when using this tool. One is you would think you could just say, okay, clip using the Alaska polygon. What you really need to do is check on this checkbox that says use the input polygon for clipping. And then the second common problem would be if your polygon is not in the same coordinate system as your raster, it won't work correctly. So since our elevation raster is in the Alaska Albers meters coordinate system, our Alaska polygon has to be in the same exact coordinate system. And then OK, we'll clip out all the pixels inside that polygon. And the result is all those pixels inside the polygon are clipped out and we still have our original hill shade which was for the entire area. So what I'm going to do is remove all the layers except for our Elevation Alaska raster layer. Okay so inside every cell is the elevation above mean sea level in meters and we might want to make another raster representing elevation zones. So for example give us elevation zones in um, thousands of meters. So to do that we can use a geoprocessing tool called the reclassify tool. Okay so using the reclassify tool if you click on the classify button what we can do is we can specify how many classes we want. So let's say we want oh, let's say five classes actually six classes and then we'll manually specify threshold values. So under manual, we would specify the six classes. So it shows us the histogram of pixel values. So there's lots of pixels at low elevation, very few pixels above about 15,000 or 1,500 meters. But basically, we'll have a class 0 to 1,000, 1,000 to 2,000, all the way up to our highest pixel is 5753. So then we could say OK and here's our old values and here will be the new values inside elevationzones.tiff. So the result is this output raster where now we've got our pixel values elevation zones 1 through 6 and we specified what those elevation zones represented when we created uh, the thresholds in the reclassify tool. And if you forgot what those values were, you could always go to the results tab and then just double click on that tool to see what the values represented. So a value of one is from one meter up to a thousand meters all the way to a value of 6 is from 5,000 meters to 57.53 meters. Okay, we could also create lines of equal elevation or contours using the contour tool. So here our input raster once again is our elevation raster in meters and we simply specify what the contour interval is going to be. So in this case, every 1,000 meters we want a contour starting at sea level. And then the z-factor would be if our elevation was in feet and our xy coordinates are in meters, we'd have to apply a z-factor to convert feet to meters. But in this example, everything's in meters. So this will create contours or lines of equal elevation. So for example, if we zoom in on the Alaska range, here are contours of equal elevation. And we can look at the attribute table for these lines. And they are polylines. And here is the attribute for what's the elevation of each line. So if we right mouse click statistics, The minimum is 1,000 and the maximum contour is 5,000 in this example.
Okay, another tool that we could use is the slope tool, which allows us to calculate from our original elevation that's in meters. So the X, Y, and Z coordinates are all in meters or the same linear unit. We could output to a new raster and that will be the slope gradient expressed either in degrees or percent slope. So in this case, I'm gonna choose percent slope rather than degrees of slope and my output will be called percentslope.tiff. So you can see, for example, the Alaska range has very steep pixels and the Yukon Flats has a uh, very shallow slope pixels, probably less than 2% for most of those pixels. You can also use a tool to calculate the dominant direction of each pixel in terms of the slope direction. And that tool is the aspect tool. So once again, your input raster is the raster where the X, Y, and Z, or elevation, are all in the same linear units, in this example, meters. And my output raster I'll call slope direction tiff. Okay, so the output from the aspect tool is values ranging from zero for northerly facing slopes um, all the way to 360. So basically the compass direction. And then there's a special value for any pixel that's flat. So if it's flat, it doesn't have a slope direction. So it's coded as a negative one. Another tool that we're gonna use is the con tool. And the con tool asks a question so let's say in this example, we wanna find the pixel that's the highest elevation pixel. So that will have a value of 5753 meters. So the question is for that elevation of Alaska, find the pixel that has a value equal to the maximum elevation of 5753. And if that's true, return that value. So just grab whatever the pixel value is and return it. If it's false, make any pixel that's not that value no data. And then we'll output that and then okay. Here's the question, is the value equal to that? And if it's true, extract the pixel value. If it's false, make it no data and output it to this new raster. Okay, so we have this new raster. It does have a pixel value of 5753. And if we look at the value attribute table or the raster attribute table, there's a count of one. So basically there's one pixel that has this value. And then if we wanna see it, it's difficult to see it because it's a single pixel. So for example, if I zoom to layer, we really don't see it. So the easiest thing to do is convert that single pixel to a point, and then it's much easier to basically label a point or symbolize a point. So we'll use the tool raster to point to create a point from that single pixel. So the result will be a point, and I'll call it highest pixel location dot shape. And that point will have an attribute called a raster value, and it should contain the elevation of that location. So since it's a point, we can give it a large marker symbol and we can label it. So here's that location with the elevation 5,753 meters. And it's around Denali, basically. And if we look at the attribute table for our point, it has something called grid code, and that's what the original pixel value was that was used when we created that point. Okay, so that's enough to get you started for this week's lab, which will be a smaller area and a much uh, finer resolution elevation raster, but basically you'll be doing the same types of operations.